Hello, guys. Hello, everyone. Uh, what an amazing day we have. Uh, it's my turn to do the final presentation. Um, basically, let me just zoom this. Okay. Yep. Um, again, what a wonderful opportunity we had today. A lot of amazing presentations. I'll try to keep it up. Uh, and for that, I brought today's topic, uh, which is migrating 5G core to the edge wisely and confidently with Kubernetes. Many of you have heard of 5G already, uh, kind of sick of what if 5G, maybe it's just an, um, a trend we are going through these years or the few past time, um, but believe me, and it's a fact that 5G and Kubernetes have, they have a long story and uh, I will try to show in today's presentation. Um, the contents for today, I wanna try to be quite um, a simple of many of the 5G topics. Uh, one introduction, then I'm going to mention the, pro the problem for this presentation. Uh, what is uh, 5G Edge? What, what is MEC, if you have uh, heard of it? Uh, what are the strategies that Kubernetes, uh, can, that can be applied in Kubernetes to achieve this 5G core at the edge? Uh, in both etcd performance, port scheduling, and uh, at the final, I'm going to do a demo analysis. It's not going to be a full demo. I think you guys, all, all of us wanted to just wrap it up. So let's try to do some, a summary. <clears throat> um, a little bit about me. My name is Marco Gonzalez. Uh, I'm from Lima, Peru. Uh, I'm based in Japan since two years, three years ago. Uh, working as a 5G solution architect at Ericsson Japan. Uh, basically, doing all about 5G rollouts in Japan for different um, telecom operators. Big coffee fan. And apart from my current role, I also am part of the AWS Community Builder Association. Basically, we try to um, talk about what is AWS solutions. In my case, I try to make blogs about networking, content delivery services, uh, and how to integrate cloud services in general. Uh, when I have time, of course, I try to do some hiking, uh, try to uh, take advantage of the amazing landscape we have in Japan. So for the problem statement, um, I want to just make a simple questions. Um, is any of you guys working with 5G or 4G uh, currently with Kubernetes or have ever worked with 5G or 4G? Oh, great, two. So, I'm going to do something really simple. I'm not going to dig in deep into 5G. For, for us, for the presentation, it's going to be just an application that is going to be run at the edge. So basically, edge, I can define as a, <clears throat> a scenario where we have a data producer trying to send a bunch of data. And in order to get a response, we are trying to put the server close to the, to the data producer. That's the main concept of edge solutions. Of course, we have different scenarios, computing offloading, uh, data caching, and data processing, and so on and so forth. But when we're trying to do this, there are common of uh, important questions we, we have. Um, is this solution is actually going to be profitable? Because um, at the end of the day, 5G is one of the uh, solutions for enterprises. Therefore, the question is, Massive IoT, is it really going to help me, this 5G edge? Is it definitely going to uh, handle critical workloads? Is it going to have some redundancy? So that, those two questions are, appears many forums when, when we talk about 5G and the edge. And the most important, um, is it saving cost? Is it, is, it, is it being profitable? Are we saving money with this? Are we, making, are we spending more money and faster TTM or time to market. 5G core and 5G solutions is meant to be, meant to have a fast delivery to the customer. Because uh, these days, obviously, customer wants everything just of the speed of light. So that's what I'm expecting from 5G. Um, I'm going to quickly talk about uh, timeline. So this is going, this was crazy. 5G and 5G Edge has started in 2019. And in just less than three years, guys, we, having, we have a bunch of um, rollouts, commercial networks, and amazing R&D projects all over the world, Germany, USA, China, 
um, until the last year is more than 660 million Haiji subscribers. And uh, definitely when you see that number, you can think about it. This is, there is some uh, use case that we can, we can uh, have with the 5G. Particularly in Japan, I have a cool um, uh, research that uh, there are indeed some R&D so, uh, projects, especially with uh, well-known well telecom operators. And the main business case we have is machine to machine, which means uh, a device is sending traffic to another device, is having a machine to machine communication, peer to peer. Um, as I said before, 5G Edge, it's, it's imposed, it's promoted by the fact that there is a huge investment worldwide, more than $7 billion, uh, uh, just uh, a forecast for 2027. And uh, of course, we are talking about Edge intelligence overall. So let's dip in, this, dig into what 5G uh, Edge and Mac or multi-access edge computing is. For the sake of the presentation, don't care about these blue boxes. There are a lot of um, information. Um, let's talk about infrastructure. Let's talk about what makes 5G at the edge works. And if you want to focus on that, let's only talk about the red boxes, red color boxes. This is a one standard um, architecture. Basically, it's defining how uh, different operators trying to apply these use cases, application computing offloading, multi-user, multi-network application, um, B2X, which is a uh, vehicle to everything, and automobile, automobile workloads, and so on and so forth, many use cases. So let's dig into those two bo red boxes. Okay, Kubernetes and 5G Edge. <clears throat> uh, Kubernetes 101, you guys know what etcd is, right? It's a it's one of the key topics of more basic topics we have. A strongly consistent distributed key value store and use the RAF consensus protocol. I was surprised that uh, uh, my colleague from, uh, well, my colleague, the speaker from Hitachi talked about this uh, consensus protocol and what are the challenges. Indeed, there are some challenges we are trying to solve with 5G Core. There are different use cases. Uh, in the previous presentation, they talk about financial bank solution, right? Strong consistency, the data must be replicated in both ends. That applies for a bank solution. If we move on to the 5G Edge IoT, which means devices, there is no such um, priority of have this strong consistency. But yet, having this strong consistency makes uh, a huge sacrifice for the HCD. Uh, let's uh, go to the, this small diagram. Every time there is a pod scaling out, every time I'm trying to, oh, the cluster is trying to collect a new pod, there's a lot of bunch of, uh, of uh, communication between the AP server, the controller, and uh, in between each of these steps, we have the famous uh, data store etcd. What happened? Every time we do one call, every time we do one operation, get or to update, there has to be this famous uh, strongly consistency synchronization. If we have three, that's a store, as you can see in the presentation, um, there's going to be a synchronization between these three nodes before replying to API, API, API server. And this go all the way until we schedule a pod, we release the pod, uh, if we have a container registry, we pull the, the image and uh, every time we have this uh, strong consistency operation. You may think, but Marco, this is just common Kubernetes, why does that affect us? I mean, it's just a few, milliseconds, a few seconds overall. That's true, um, but let's think of it this way. Um, apart from 5G at the edge, we're also trying to use bare metal. We're also trying to not rely on one vendor, which we are trying to open the different options with AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Today, I saw a bunch of presentations just talking about those um, public providers, and you guys know that they charge for everything traffic, right? Every in-out traffic, they charge. So every time you do, do this synchronization, you are pretty much uh, increasing your monthly fee. So that's the one thing that is not mandatory for this use case of IoT. What is the strategy in this case? Well, this is kind of the opposite of what my, uh, the, the previous speaker mentioned. It's move from a strong consistency to a lazy thinking. For that, um, we use the conflict-free duplicate data types, 
which it's not, uh, as the name says, it doesn't need to perform immediate communication with our nodes. Instead, it definitely answers the query or replies the API, API server and performs this, oh, this two um, uh, uh, replication, state-based or operation-based. Of course, um, the first one is refined like a image copy between the nodes, and the second one is just uh, cloning the commands to the different uh, data stores. Obviously, the second one is more bandwidth efficient, so it's one of the strategies uh, we can use in order to reduce this um, delay and improve the overall cluster performance. Um, of course, I'm focusing this solution on the massive IoT scenario. This is one of the key scenarios we have so far uh, worldwide in 5G Gore Edge. Uh, second strategy, uh, again, basic concept, uh, how to do a post strategy, guys. Um, how, to, how we scale, we do the basic HPA, BPA, and the cluster outscaling. Those three options we have been working, we have seen all our different labs, different um, uh, sessions, so it's very common. But if you try to take this, just as it is, to the 5G core, you have one challenge. 5G users are not that predictable. For instance, um, you guys know like uh, 5G, it's meant to be, to use many use cases. Video gaming, streaming, uh, TikToker's uh, biggest tool. So one user can do many things. So it's not like a one user, one traffic. It's not one user, one request. It's one user, many requests. So if you think that this is going to solve the, your problem, you may end up having uh, an outage. So that's, what, that's why telecom operators don't want. And for that, one of the strategy, it's um, develop and improve the proactive pods out scaler. This is obviously um, research. Um, if you can see the diagram on my left, um, there is a, kind of like a more aligned to what is the um, machine learning introduced to the 5G. For instance, we have a one control loop. In this case, for the sake of the presentation, every 20 seconds is going to um, evaluate, it's going to receive metrics, but not only CPU, memory, storage, not, not only the common ones. More data that is aligned to the, to the client, it's, it's aligned to the use case. That's a big difference between 5G and uh, let's say any database server. It's not that um, straightforward. So based on that, um, you can predict the behavior and the take a prompt action. It's not just um, I'm going to increase when I, f I found the issue. That in, in a telecom service is just service impact and is customer complaining, it's impact to the, uh, to the brand. So that's something at least uh, so far, it's one of the key discussions for the 5G Edge. Um, one of the benefits, of course, it's a uh, proactive workflow for auto scaling, multi metrics that can be used, um, takes into consideration, uh, of course, limitation and constraints of the resources. This is important because, um, as I mentioned before, 5G Edge is not going to use one simple um, brand or one simple uh, flavor. It's going to use Multi-edge for uh, cloud providers is going to use, as I think today was presented, bare metal. So different options. So for this randomness, for this variety of options, we can use this proactive pod out scaling and we can use the benefit of it. Okay, um, I tried to make one simple ecosystem or what 5G edge is so far. If I miss one of them, please forgive me. I've, I tried to come up with the open source project that are aligned to the uh, 5G Edge. As you can see, the center is um, focused on the uh, CNI, CRI, and CSI. We have discussed this today. Uh, also, I, 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 I forgot to add the, the, the mesh, uh, which is also key for 5G Edge, of course. Uh, these four projects open source, um, I'm going to discuss about them, just as a summary, because of the, of the time. and. Above that, as we can see, there's Argo, amazing uh, CI/CD. Um, some of them, the numbering well now, it's been I care that I'm using. 
uh, Nifio is an open source project that is having a lot of attention these days. Um, in previous uh, KubeCon, they have a lot of uh, um, use cases which are quite interesting. And ONAP was just a standard to set um, how it is going to be deployed. On top of that, uh, of course, we have the application. As I said, for us, we are developers, integrators, 5G is just an, um, just an application. Of course, it's complex, but it, at the end of the day, it's just one application. And for, we have these two options with our open source. We are mainly used for any, for many international conference. So I try to put them in this presentation. The table on the left, it's a um, summary and a comparison between these four uh, projects for Cube Edge. As you can see, uh, Slightly advantage is assigned to the K2S, uh, while the Cube Edge it's having some sort of like a complexity, as, um, some not available documentation. Personally, and this is just taken from one uh, research uh, this year. Personally, I didn't find any issue with the Cube Edge. In fact, I think Cube Edge and K2S are so far one of the strongest one to make at least R&D or uh, test, test labs. Uh, but pretty much this is a summary of what we can see for the current top um, Kubernetes open source projects. Okay, so <clears throat> for the demo section, um, I try to be as simple as possible. I try to not uh, show or not focus on the um, proactive post scaling. First, because it will demand to have one machine learning and one uh, algorithm to do the, the prediction. Instead, I just simply use one cluster, um, we have one master node, three worker nodes, uh, public IP. And the reason why is that because I'm using, or what I used AWS um, services and specifically one EC2 nodes, which is just uh, virtual machines. Um, the IoT devices in this case are IP cameras which is a basic solution for just streaming or data streaming. Uh, of course, we have Prometheus for an LA key for monitoring and uh, data and observation. Uh, the notes specification in this demo, I tried to use uh, 32 cores, uh, 100 GB RAM, 500 GB storage, and the 233 IOPS. Uh, when I discuss with my colleague about this scenario, uh, there's also that always a question, why do you pick those values? Well, there are many reasons, of course. Um, one of the key ones is that um, as a community builder, I have free, uh, I have some points to use, so I didn't, I, I didn't have to pay for this. So I just wanted to try how, how, how robust are the, the AWS. Um, in fact, uh, this, let's say, flavor is used for the actual 5G core that AWS offered to the public. So I just wanted to try. Uh, the repo has all the, uh, the load tests the load tester code. Um, as I mentioned before in this presentation, for the sake of the time, I'm not going to do any video demo, guys. Just going to go straight to the summary. Uh, please go through this deeper, uh, GitHub repo. One, uh, and, um, I must mention this. Um, I basically found one amazing load test uh, repo and fork it and modify it. Some smart, real smart guys uh, made this load test, so it's not for me to reinvent the wheel. It's just to use and uh, try to apply for my use case. These uh, uh, six test cases, KPIs, is what uh, I consider relevant. If we focus on the um, uh, HCD or the database uh, consumption, if you can see we have a cluster API, uh, how, is that, how far it is, and how fast is the create deployment initially. If you can see from all these values, which are in milliseconds, the one who still kind of like give us some, um, uh, let's, let's say, so, uh, some discussion is how much time it takes for the pods to be running. Of course, um, we can deploy, easily deploy a cluster. That's quite easy. But if you have to scale and considering the current limitation we have for the etcd, of course, uh, the four projects have some struggles, I still have some struggles. Uh, these four projects use different um, CNI, CSI, and of course, we have a, a lot of customization. For the sake of this, uh, uh, for this demo, I guess I use default uh, CNI, default configuration. 
As you can see, CubeH has the highest response, um, which doesn't imply that it's not the, the, the best option. Uh, one of the, the ones that was kind of steady uh, up along the, 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 the test, which, by the way, which is was just a scale out from 10 replicas to 100 replicas. So it's just one scale out. Uh, and yes, I, I was trying to monitor how fast are for the pods to be running. Because this imply I have 10,000 um, IP cameras, I have many cameras, so they are increasing the traffic loads rapidly. So what I'm expect, I'm expect my cluster to get roughly used to this increase and ad adjust and also increase the capacity. That's pretty much the uh, demo that perform and have time. Okay, um, takeaways. As I said, uh, 5G core the edge have many advantages and many challenges. One of them that I present today are two. The edge CD dependency, the edge CD, let's say, um, let's see the limitation when we're trying to be too strong consistency in that store. There are many options that, or many use cases that doesn't require edge CD to be strongly um, consistency. Also, the pod strategy is one of the key topics that still uh, a lot of research, a lot of um, um, tests, uh, a lot of failure and tests doing uh, recently to, for the pod strategy. Um, is trying, we're trying to get up of the basic um, um, of the scaling and just use a more predictive one, which is what the customer usually uh, requires. Uh, at the very end, I talk about the current edge Kubernetes projects design and uh, there shows some um, speed when we are um, starting up, when, when we are deploying the, the initial cluster, but still there are some observation or there are still not, uh, we're still seeing some latencies when we're trying to uh, actually get the pods running, which is when the application is, is already uh, ready for, for taking traffic. That's pretty much my, my demo for today. And uh, with that, thanks so much for your time. And thank you. Oh, if you anyone have any questions or any comments, please. Yeah, it's almost five thirty. Yeah, people are tired. <laughs> oh, if not, um, you can connect with me with uh, using my blog that I have. I try to upload AWS and uh, of course five G and Kubernetes content. Please, um, you can contact me and get in touch with Twitter um, or LinkedIn. Everything's fine. Yeah, thank you.